Okay, so finally, local collaborations. The bottom line, it's never been a better time for productive local partnerships and collaborations. Everybody right now is hustling. The rules have changed. We're all playing a new game. Everyone is trying to survive. People are desperate to support local businesses and ensure that their communities can recover and thrive through these really, really tough times. Some businesses are temporarily closed down and trying to get their doors open and you know, are making plans for business continuity. So you're definitely not alone. Everyone is searching for a partnership and a way to survive right now. So I wanna focus on two areas. One being local business collaborations and the second, which we'll get to in a second, local tours, activity and experience partnerships. So first of all, look around you. Where can you find a partnership? Where can you partner? Which businesses can you compliment right now? Who can compliment you right now? Who do you share a customer with? And I'll, I'll give you some examples. So if you run, let's say, nature and photography tours, well, a possible collaboration, a possible partnership might be your local camera store. And earlier you heard from Karina Veith at Shutterbug Walkabouts about the really great collaboration she's got in place with the local camera store where they've got a mutually beneficial relationship in place. They're driving a lot of business for Karina with customers from their store. And likewise, Karina's referring a lot of customers to them. And most likely she will continue to do that long-term when international travel bounces back and the domestic market is uh, is up and running and, and humming along as well. So a lot of upside for both of them. If you run foodie walking tours, well, what about a partnership with a local cafe, a local barista? A lot of cafes will be either temporarily closed or will have had you know, really harsh restrictions put on them so that they may be able to do takeaways but they can't have people in stores. So a really great, immersive, private, hands-on experience. I'm sure there's a lot of great opportunity there if you can find the right partner. What if you run kayaking tours? Well, your local outdoor store, it might be a privately owned one or who knows, you could reach for the stars and get in touch with the likes of Katmandu or the likes of Anaconda, some of the really big players in that space. The old adage, you, you, you don't get or you don't know if you don't ask. If you run city tours, no matter what type of city tour you run and no matter what type of market you cater to, I'm sure that you're always looking for something to differentiate yourself, looking for something to improve the uniqueness of your tour. Now, if you run a tour, let's say in Melbourne, Australia, my hometown, well, we like to say that Melbourne is the renowned fashion capital of Australia. A lot of people visiting Melbourne would love to learn more about Melbourne's fashion scene and what makes Melbourne known as the fashion capital of Australia. So a local designer, local boutiques are all struggling at the moment and we'd be desperate to explore a partnership, something that just allows them to keep the doors open or something that will allow them to have the doors open again once restrictions are eased. So a partnership with a local designer, a local fashionista, a local artisan, with whom you share customers, they would be really, really interested in learning more about how you might work together. So I guess what I'm saying, three, four, five months ago, if you had thought about building these local collaborations, these local partnerships, and you'd approached a lot of these type of partners, many would have said, look, thanks, but no thanks. It's probably outside my core business. I've got my own stuff going on, and I'm really probably wanting to focus more on that. But the game has changed now and you're going to have a lot of people really, really interested in creating partnerships and collaborations with you. So really explore those. Okay, the second one here, local tour or activity or experience partnerships and collaborations. So in the past, you might have competed for business. Well, that's no longer the case. Now is not the time for competitors. And I'm sure all tour and activity and experience operators are thinking the same way. And if they're not, they're crazy. Now is the time where you should be banding together, working out ways that you can help each other. So how could you do that? Well, you could consider making bookings on behalf of each other for a, for a commission, for a percentage. You might consider enhancing your experiences by pairing two complementary tours or activities together, which could be the catalyst to entice a local, a potential local customer to take action. And a really great example of this is the team at Experience Vancouver Group. So Experience Vancouver Group was created by a small group of tour and activity operators, a, a foodie walking tour operator, a bike tour, boat tour, 
and a water sports operator who identified that one of the real pain points of their customers, and these are customers that they shared, was that it was really hard to know which tours or which activities were actually really good. So this was a group of operators that, that really believed in each other's products. They were aware of the fact that they all shared many different types of customers. So their solution was an agreement between these tour businesses, all of which had high quality tours, to build one customer friendly website that promoted all of their tours and activities and to use shared coupons and easily customizable multi-tour packages. So they shared their marketing dollars, which is hugely important as their popularity grew, they as a group became synonymous with the ultimate and the only type of experiences that anyone would want to do when visiting Vancouver. And as a result, their businesses exploded. So this is pretty much one of the best examples of a mutually beneficial collaboration that I've seen. So just to reinforce, to get started, I recommend you just ask yourself these two questions. Who do you share a customer with and how can you help each other? So brainstorm some ideas, get a list together and think of the ways that you could help each other. And then the next step, which is really important, is to go about it in a really professional manner because to go about it by just saying, hey, you know, reaching out and saying, hey, you know, this is me and, and I've got this idea, what do you think? Maybe we should start referring a bit of business to each other. That's not going to work. It needs to be done in a professional way. So that means taking the time being the one to take the responsibility, getting a proposal together, being detail oriented, putting some details into that proposal about your ideas, your thoughts, how you see it working, some mutual benefits, what would be the benefit to you and what would the benefit look like to this partner, some rough numbers, here are some estimates of some numbers that I've pulled together, they may be accurate, they may be not, but they may be ballpark or something to work with, and the next steps, what are the actions that you see are required by, by both parties. So if you can put some details together in a proposal just to get the ball rolling, just to kickstart things, that other party is gonna be really impressed. They're gonna be excited. They're gonna be far more willing to explore a partnership and it's gonna get things moving a lot more quickly. So go about it professionally, get it down in writing and put some details together.